Welcome to my channel. I'm Robin Clevett and this video is about warm roof construction, warm pitch roof construction in particular. Now this is a subject which I get asked a lot about. Most of the roof conversions that we do or new builds we do, we insulate between and underneath the rafters and we have to ventilate above the insulation from eave to ridge. The difference with this type of roof, which is a warm roof, more commonly done on flat roof structures, is the fact that we have an insulation over the top and we have one in between, but they sit together, so one over the rafter and one tight up against it on the inside. And this is a new build and we're looking for a U value of 0.11. Now, I'm just gonna start this video by saying that if you go and search on Google for warm pitched roof, details there's all kinds of information from all kinds of people you've got the insulation manufacturers you've got some building control people you've got the nhbc and they all vary wildly and they also vary depending whereabouts you are in the country as some regs are different say in the north as they are in the south all that's down to climate etc and temperatures so in our case what we've done is we have consulted the insulation company the building control and we also now have a system which everyone's in agreement that will get us the values we want and also everything we need to get out of the insulation so i personally love this way of insulating because if you look behind me at the building it becomes like a flask so you've got this completely um, full insulation layer all the way over the rafter and that basically seals everything up as well and then when you come up underneath as well, you get that really good thick mass of insulation. It's fairly straightforward to do. It's a little bit fiddly here. This roof is 49 degrees. So when you're working on it, we have to lay ladders up it and all the rest of it. So you have to be a little bit careful because it's a bit slippery. So let's go and have a close look at some of the details on the roof. Okay, so I'm gonna start by saying that you need to think this through when you're gonna be doing a warm pitch roof, okay, because the eave needs to be set up completely differently. This is the eave, this is the foot of the roof. Now the rafter is basically the main section here which comes through. This section here we like to call a sprocket. The sprocket gives us the extra depth we need to get our 100 millimeters of PIR and our 45 by 45 counter batten over the top. Now these particular pieces of material we make up from lots of the offcuts that we get from the roof. So we start by putting the rafter in with what we call a seat cut, which is just a level cut which takes a soffit. And then we add this section on. So we glue it on and we also fix up through the bottom of the soffit cup. We fix down through there. And then when we actually fix on our main batten, we use a really long fixing and come all the way down through into the rafter. Those are around about 220 millimeters long. And that fixing then holds this whole thing really secure. The glue also does a great job as well. And then here we have the roof set up roughly where it will be. So we'll be cutting the front of the foot off as normal and we end up with around about a 300 millimeter soffit. We put on our fascia board. We also put an over fascia vent to vent above the insulation out to the ridge as well. So you've got this continuous ventilation through the top. So that's basically how we set up the eave. We make the sprocket, we mount it on. I put a rebate in the sprocket to take the counter button here all the way through and that holds it all beautifully as well. So let's take a little look at how we deal with the gables. So because we've got this 100 mil PIR all the way over the whole surface, the idea is, is to keep that as seamless as possible and as tight as possible. We try to make sure everything fits really nicely to one another. And we also have to take into consideration where we have a junction which meets something else that's insulated. In our case, we're using also the same method on the gable walls. So you can see this point here is the structural part of the gable wall, that's the stud. Then we've got our 18 mil sheathing, which is the bracing. Then we've got this uh, plate of OSB here, which we use to come up underneath tight with our insulation on the wall. And that gives the support that we need to our gable ladder that hangs out. The gable ladder is the same height as the insulation. Then in this section from here to here to this insulation, we also insulate there as well, because technically speaking, that would be a cold spot. So we will go around and we'll put a square of insulation in between all of these 
before we put our membrane over and then our roofing batten. Now let's talk a little bit about the membrane because as I said at the beginning of this video, quite often when you look for detail, you'll see the insulation, then the membrane, then the counter batten, and then the actual batten for the tile or the roof finishes or the roof coverings. In our case, we couldn't decide between having the felt here or here. So we consulted our building inspector. We also found something on the LABC, um, which showed it at this position. So treating that as a rafter, then we put our membrane on and then we put our batten on. So you can do it the other way. You can have the membrane here because that detail is shown a lot, whether it's right or wrong. Indeed, one insulation manufacturer that I found on the same page, they have two like diagrams, one's here and one's here. It's almost like they couldn't make up their mind. You'll also note that the tiny little roof over the back of the dormer is also fixed through into the trimmers underneath, into the structural parts of the roof over the top of the insulation. The reason we do that is the fact that if you try to insulate around these, I'll show you the front valley where we've had to do it because it's a big valley, it's very fiddly. No matter how good you are at cutting this stuff or the tools you have, it's very difficult to make that absolutely perfect. So the difference is if those weren't there and that was tiled across, those tiles in those positions, those triangles would turn straight out and go on those faces. There's no additional weight at all. The additional weight would only come from the roof structure. You've got two lay boards, you've got six little tiny rafters and a piece of ridge. That would weigh about 30 or 40 kilos in weight. So it's no extra weight at all. We use an extra thick lay board as well. So it adds some structure and rigidity. Sometimes you see lay boards which are made out of plywood or sometimes you see them out of sort of inch material or 25 material, but it wouldn't be so good because as you'd screw it in, it would want to pull the insulation down. So that's how we basically do all of our little dormers. It's a much, much better insulated roof. Then in the dormers themselves, we go back to venting over the top of the roof and they're a cold roof. So we'll put 350 millimeters of rock wall or glass fiber in those roofs as well, instead of trying to make them super beefy and go over the top with the PIR. Another key feature when you're doing a job like this is to make sure that you get your ridge all the way up and completely cut perfectly with a mitre at the top. It takes a bit of setting up, but once you've worked it out and you set your saws up, it can be done. And you'll notice that we tape all the joints as well. That just adds a little bit more air tightness, even though we didn't really need it because our joints were absolutely perfect. If you know anything about what I do, I'm a bit of a fanatic. We'll also then trim all of the tops of these counter battens as they come across there um, for the vented ridge system as well. So let's have a quick look at the roof from up here. It's a pretty impressive structure. Right, I'm gonna go take you to look at that front pitch over there with the valley because we've actually had to mitre all those in perfectly. So this main front section, we PIR'd obviously over both sides because this is the main mass of the roof. And what we do in, in, in CERN over the valleys there is mitre the boards perfectly with a compound mitre. We put them in together and obviously tape over the top. And you'll see the counter battens I've left just short. That's purely at the moment. If we get any rain, it won't soak up the ends of those timbers. The valleys that we're using here are fiberglass. So we fix two battens all the way down and they clip in over the top. I'll show you what they look like. So these are the valley sections which are going to be going in the valleys. You can see what, how it works is they get supported by a batten here and here in these positions. They fold round into the corner and the tiles are dry cut into the sides. And this is effectively the drainage gutter. And they'll be working everywhere, basically. This is the front without the insulation on the gable. There's the 18 mil OSB sheathing all nailed back, giving us that rigidity. There's the little plate there that we put on to make sure our insulation comes up tight against it. The reason I put that on there is if you went up against these fingers here and there's any giving that, they'll just push into the PIR. So this is adding a lot of support to these extended gable ladders here, which take the under soffit and the barge board. So coming onto the inside of the roof, you can see that it's all covered over everywhere, completely covered 
with that external skin of PIR. The next thing we'll be doing is insulating in between with the same thickness of PIR, so we'll have 200 millimeters overall. We'll be using a Gapo tape on that as well because I'm a lover of Gapo tape. And then once we've got all of that in, we'll put our little ceiling in which goes in, which basically fixes the side of the rafters and gets hung back onto our girder. That'll all happen before we tile. Where you come up from your insulated wall, so you can see how we've got our girder beam there which sits down onto our wall plate. We've insulated between everything. And then over the plate, you'll see that there's a triangular section which has been fitted in to make sure that this insulated part of the wall meets with the over roof stuff. That also allows us to put in a square cut on the bottom of our PIR, push it right against, and that's a really nice detail. On the other side of that girder wall down here that I'm showing you now, we've also insulated that as well, which comes from the cavity insulation and joins to the PIR. So at the eve, it's really important that you make sure there's no air coming in, that you're fully insulated and there's no cold spots. This is really, really crucial. Okay, so how do I actually achieve these cuts? So I use the Festool ISC240. This is a dedicated machine. It's like a large jigsaw. It's got a super strong riving knife, which is really rigid, which enables the blade to stay fairly square. Now this tool is designed for straight cuts. It doesn't allow you to do beveled or angled cuts. So what I do is I make a modification. This block is fixed on. I've actually drilled the base of the machine and I screw this on. And then when I cut through, I get the angle that I require. So I require an angle of 49 degrees. What this allows me is, this is 41 degrees. So once I've cut through it, I end up with a 49 degree cut. Then this section here for the ridge to get that even straighter, I use a circular saw. How that works is I cut from one side and then I cut from the other side and all it leaves is a little piece in the middle here. The reason I do that is because that is actually squarer and straighter than the ISC 240, okay? I've also got here another one which gave me the correct angle for the valleys as well. So this is another one I make up. It's very straightforward. Just rip them down and that's how we do it. But I will stress, you do need to have very good dust extraction. Now with the circular saw, I didn't use a polycrystalline blade, which has only got the three teeth. You don't really need it. I've just used one of my older blades and because I'm not cutting all the way through and I've got dust extraction, what's happening is it's coming all the way out of the cut and straight into the dust extractor. There's no residual dust, okay? So it's much, much safer. Once I've made the cut, I just snap it through and clean off this little bit because the saw blade gets me nearly all the way through. And that's basically how I do it. Interestingly here, where you can see there's a double rafter here above the purlin, or in fact all the way down, and one there, we've got a roof window to go in here. Now the reason we haven't cut that in yet is because once we've gauged up the tiles on the outside, we want to make sure we've got a full course under the window. So it's at that point where we'll then cut the insulation out and we'll trim the rafters and put in our trimmers exactly where we need them to make sure that the tiles work with the Velux roof window. So that's another thing which is hard to predict when you're adding so much onto the top of a roof. So I'll give you a little look of what the roof looks like this way. There you go. And you can just imagine now how effective that insulation is. It's, as I said before, it's like a flask. The whole of that outside of the roof is already completely covered really well. All the ridges meet beautifully. They're all mitered in. So we know for a fact that we've, we've done a really good job already. That's the basis of our warm pitch roof construction, okay? And as I said at the very beginning of this video, there are so many ways of achieving it. There's so many materials. There's so many different applications. It all boils down to following a system. And every system will have its own sort of quirks. Some will be more complicated than others, but it is time consuming. But the payback is a far, far better insulated building 
you do get much more efficiency out of the building as well because you've got this encapsulation of insulation right over the top before you even go in between as well. You do have to use very long fixings. Sometimes you might think, well, that fixing is going to cold bridge all the way through. The fixings are 220 mil long. We've got a 175 rafter all over this roof. The chances of the bridging coming all the way down through those single fixings here is fairly slim, okay? So um, there's not a lot of, you, you can't really avoid that. If you were just putting an insulation over the top of the structure, then you were bonding something to that. You could use the small plastic flanges that you push in and the fixing is lower down. You can't really do that in the case where you've got a large 45 mil by 45 mil counter batten. Anyway, any questions you've got about this, please don't hesitate to ask. I will be doing a follow-up video when we insulate the inside uh, of the roof as well using the Gapo tape. But until then, stay tuned. Catch you again soon.